you coming along. You really you sound really good. So let's give another hand for her. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. I was gonna start off with this clip. Um, well, before that, let's give Mike a hand because he did some of these slides for me for my pictures, amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody working in their gift. Everybody doing their stuff. But uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, play this clip because. We really want to talk about breaking the, jank, the chains, breaking generational curses Man. today, breaking stuff that's been kind of lingering over our lives. And so Amen. I'll just say one, two, three, because I know we got to synchronize the oh, Nisha went to the. And so uh, I seen this interview with uh, Dez Bryant. I just thought it was so powerful and so uh, impactful for what we're going to speak on today, okay? One, two, three. Two. That cycle to ensure your kids don't have to follow in those same footsteps. Like, what, what, what are the steps? What do you do? Let me read something to you real quick. I mean, lots of it. It's been on my mom's body since I met y'all. I've had like six years. It's saying, break generational curses. Quit yelling at your kids before they go to bed and expect them to sleep well. Quit yelling at your kids in the morning right after they wake up before school and expect them to have a good day. You set the tone for your children. You set the tone for the, you set the tone for your voice. They will always remember in their heads. You become the inner voice. Don't be the inner critic. Speak life, speak love, speak bravery, kindness and hope, speak wisdom and truth. Most of all, listen to your children. I never had none of that. I get at your mind. And that's my number one priority. That's how I follow that. That's how I pray. And I do it. I live it. I live it. Amen. And so, did it look like it was easy for him to say that? No. <laughs> it felt like a little struggle, right? And breaking generational curses. Thank you, bro. I can follow it. Breaking the generational curses, it may not come easy, but it is possible. Amen. Amen. And who the Son has set free is free indeed. But sometimes we forget we've all had stuff that's been lingering over our life. And there's no point fingers. Listen, I brought these chains because I want you to see a, a real life illustration of what chains are meant to do. It's meant to bog us down. Everything that's created is created for a design. And chains are meant to keep us in bondage. Chains are meant to keep us ashamed. And the thing about chains is, you can't break out of them yourself. Okay, we ain't getting no amens on that one. You can't break out of them yourself. This is not about a strong man competition. This is about the man and seeing him for who he is and what he has done for us. This is that we've taught on the anointing and how the anointing is the power to break the chains, break every yoke that's trying to be oppressed upon us. But the first thing we have to do is we have to show empathy. Empathy with ourselves, empathy with our brothers and sisters. Empathy, you know, I, um, I was just thinking about how certain chains were over my life and, and certain chains were over some of the kids' life that I was teaching on Freeway Foundation. And I remember they had cuffed this little boy up, put him in chains, and he was screaming and yelling because it, I could tell he ain't never been on them before. Was, this was in school on the south side, and I remember taking my jacket, covering his cuffs up, and saying, listen, is this necessary? And I kind of took the boy in the office, kind of talked to him, try to, try to break him down so he can you know, feel a bit easier about himself. And what ended up happening is they was able to take the chains off of him because he did calm down. But the chains are meant to embarrass us, it's meant to hold us, but who the Son has set free is free indeed. So you don't have to walk around with chains on. You don't have to walk around like you're so pent up with stress and all of the angers of what you didn't do, what you did do, because the blood covers it all, amen? amen. And breaking the chains, as Isaiah 52, 1, it says this, Awake, awake, Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of what? Splendor. Splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city, 
the uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Shake off your dust. Uh oh. Uh -huh. Rise up, sit enthroned, Jerusalem. Who is Jerusalem now? It's us. Amen. Amen. So, what you have to do sometimes while you're in the chains, sometimes you got to clothe yourself with strength and say, I am strong. So when, sometimes when you're in the chains, sometimes you get to uh, uh, put, put, put garments on you that's beautiful. Sometimes you got to rise up. Sometimes you got to look at yourself and say, you know what? These are temporary chains, but these chains don't belong to me. Amen. And when you're in the chains, guess what? I celebrate because I know I'm coming out of any chains that I've ever been, where there's depression, anxiety, fear. And so we're going to break down what God wants us to do in these chains. When you are wrapped up and you don't know what to do, you got to help. Anthony was just talking about it today, that you have a present help, not a past help, not a future help. He's here right now. Amen. But the first thing you have to do is break out of scarcity, y'all. I mean, man, I'm telling you, every time I try to talk to a person to break into a new thing, it's always, yeah, but I don't know if I have enough. <laughs> Listen, I'm not talking to your bank account right. when I'm talking to you about moving forward. I'm not talking to you about your knowledge about you moving forward. I'm talking to that spirit man that knows there's more for you. Amen? Amen. Some of y'all been in that job too long. It's time to break out. But you'll never break out thinking about, what, well, what happened if I flop? No, what happened if you succeed? Come on, Come on man. I know I'm preaching. See, insecurity can't grow. Scarcity can't grow. It's, it's, it's a walking victim. Somebody stole my joke. And I'm going to get tell by everybody. Listen, who cares about a stupid joke where God can give you more? I had a brother, I was listening to an interview yesterday, and they said, have anybody ever tried to steal your joke? He's like, yeah. He said, what you do? I create more. <laughs> and I create more. I got over 5,000 more jokes. See, if somebody steals something from you, you don't have to go back and try to get it from them. You can just go to your heavenly father and say, okay, I got more up here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When somebody, you know, everybody was talking about the mamba mentality and all this stuff, you know, on Facebook. I'm like... Most of these people don't even understand the mama mentality because Kobe said this. And well, what happened if I put all my eggs in one basket? Kobe said, well, what you mean? You don't supposed to put all your eggs in one basket. He said, well, if I put all my eggs in one basket and they all crushed, then guess what? I go make some more eggs. See, scarcity is no part of the kingdom of God. What's a part of the kingdom of God is an endless mind of grace and gratitude and knowing that my God is forever with me and I'm never going to run out. But when I was in scarcity, that's where the fight comes in. That's where the anger comes in. What's up when a demon penetrate your soul to make you think like you are without? No, you are not without. When you in scarcity, you are in a mentality that the enemy wants you in because he has you bind up thinking that you ain't got a father that will unloose you. At any time, you call his name. He is right there. In 2 Samuel 12 and 8, <laughs> uh, this is where King David had sent the servant out to get killed because he wanted to sleep with her wife or whatever. And this is where God had came back to him and corrected him. Now check out how God corrected King David. He says, I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. Now back then, this is back then, not now, y'all. They had concubines. <laughs> and so what he was saying is, listen, I could have gave you more if you was missing out on something. See, we think the mentality of God is beating us up, beating us up because we disobey. No, he... He's, he's tapping us because he's saying, listen, you could have came to me. I could have been more of a blessing. I wish I, I wish I could tap the window 18 years ago and say, man, 
You ain't got to speed on this job because you're going to flip your car over into a ditch. God got another job for you. You ain't got to speed and flip this car over. God got more for you. I wish I could have tapped window and say, listen, I know this person stole out your room, all these DVDs, and you're going to choke him out. Don't choke him out because God got more for you. You got more DVDs coming. <laughs> I wish I could have tapped myself and said, listen, you don't have to be insecure in this marriage. You ain't got to win every argument. Let it go. And that's when the chains really start falling off because you know you got a God that lets it go. And I ain't got to win to win. I am the victor. See, come on now. This is about your identity. We always pray for stuff. But do you believe that you are the stuff? <laughs> You're a dog chasing his own tail. Who are you praying about? You're praying to get this, get this, so it can make you feel like this. No, you are the righteousness of God. Not when you move in the house, not when you get married, not when you get that degree. You are right. right here, right now. Satan trying to make you thirsty. So when you go in that, that store, you buy up everything. No, brokenness, I've learned, it's not about money. It's a disease of a spirit that don't feel like it's with. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you're without, yeah. what happens is Satan can easily maneuver and grab you. And try to take you. Amen. Amen. But God is with you. Amen. Amen. But you know what? I was thinking like this. Like, man, I wish I could go back. I wish I could go back in time. And then God paused me today and said this. No. You know what? You ain't got to wish that no more. Because my grace is sufficient for you. Uh -huh. yeah. That means all the mistakes you made in your past with them. Yeah, I know. I know you did it. I know you had to flee from college. I know you had to do this. I know you had to. You got kicked off the insurance. But guess what? I've restored all that to you. See, some of you all are trying to count on your hand all the opportunities you missed. And God says, I am here to restore you. Why? Because he says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. Stop trying to be perfect all the time. Because perfect is not going to bring the power. Talk about it. Talk about it. What's going to bring the power is yielding to his strength. This is what the word sufficient mean in, in the Bible. Because we think that sufficient, oh yeah, he just, he just covered it. That's what I says. He just covered it. Sufficient means his grace is actually super abundant, never ending, inexhaustible, and never changing. That means this, you can't run out. And some religious people really get mad when I say, yeah, he forgive you of your past sins. Uh-oh. And he forgive you of your future sins. Why? So you can live secure today. Amen? Without scarcity. Without saying, you know what? God, I pray for this, this, this. Your father already said, what you going to eat, what you going to sleep, what you going to worry. You don't supposed to pray for that. All these things trace the righteous. When you have an understanding of who you are, you don't even pray for certain things. It change up your verbiage. It change up your attitude. It change up your life. You live with this thing. You don't try to chase it. Like I said with the Ethiopians, they was like, man, how y'all winning every single year? Y'all always winning. They be having them heads like, hey, we running, we good, we, we killing the game. That's because they live it. They do it for sport. America do it for sport. We do it for sport. They do it to get their meal. <laughs> they get it to get the gazelle every day. They chase it, running 10 miles sometimes. And see, this is how the Christian life works, y'all. If you, some people get exhausted being around people because we can't be our authentic selves. And so we enter this thing called, um, what they call it in psychology, it's a certain word they call it. It's called the imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. where I can't be myself. So, you know, when I leave church, it's like, all right, cut and ah, oh man, now I can be me again. <laughs> and when you're living like this, what happens is being around people there's a drain because you can't be yourself around people. Uh oh. So just like a, you know we did that play and everybody was finished, like oh let's take this off. Why? Because that's not who you are. So when you are your authentic self, you can be secure that God got you in your authenticity. So when I was on the job. I go, oh, snap, that's what's up. Oh, when do you kind of lie? Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's just who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And what does snap mean? <laughs> uh, snap mean, uh, you know, it's surprising. It's, it's, it's like, oh man, unexpected. Well, I never heard verbiage like that. Where you gonna hear it today, Karen? <laughs> because I'm not changing. I'm not gonna raise my blood pressure so I can be different here, different church, different here, different here. I gotta be the same. So there's anointing to kick. I get to be the same. So you ain't gonna raise my blood pressure. I'm not gonna put on the telephone voice. I'm gonna go out to barbecue it, and this is the same window you're gonna get that to. See, it takes boldness to be who you are. Because you know that real security, nobody can take. I know we, I know what I put my seatbelt on because it's secure. I got my protection because it's secure. I got insurance because it's secure. But deep down inside, that's not what's really secure. It's God that's securing you. Amen? Amen? You have to know this deep down in your heart that you're a divine being before you're a human being. And because you're a divine being, your assignment cannot be... Think about Jesus. We think we know security. Jesus knew a man in his camp was stealing from him. I'm like, Jesus should have kicked this joke out. <laughs> was it, is it me that's going to betray you, Lord? We would have been like, boy, if you don't shut your mouth, you know it's you. No, Jesus kept going on his way. Wow, that's security. Come on. <laughs> you think security is catching every joker, don't you? Nah. You can't catch everybody that steals from you. <laughs> but you can live in this ocean, though, with a life supply. If somebody take a big gulp and scope it and run away from it, you just look at them like, you know, I got way more in there, right? <sighs> His grace is way more than your insufficient funds. His favor is way more than that mispayment. His favor has covered me when money could not cover me. His favor has covered this church when they got frozen and locked up and people couldn't come in for three months. And I had a, the person over there say, you know what? You ain't got to pay me this month. I, I know you've had experience where a favor saved your butt. Amen? Can I get an Amen. Hallelujah. The next thing is you have to break out the nest. Some of us are getting too comfortable in certain places. <laughs> and one of the things I learned about a bird nest uh, this past year is once that bird starts to get of age, I said, I was listening to National Geographic, I think. They said that the birds start bringing thorns. <laughs> I did not know this. They start bringing thorns to the nest. And the, the birds keep on getting hit. Ooh, and what happens is the bird keeps getting hit. Ow, ow, and then he leaps out. And some of us, we won't live in that nest. We won't keep on getting that ah, dimmy. Ah, dimmy. Get out of the Egyptian mindset. This is not about you getting feed no more. This is about you feeding. <laughs> okay. So he jumps out the nest because it gets uncomfortable. In Romans 8.22 it says this, we know that the whole creation has been groaning together and it suffers together the pains of labor. And not only the creation, but ourselves. There is something inside of you that is suffering because you ain't jumping out. There is something inside of us that's suffering and is in pain and we know, come on, we, we got we to gotta move forward. What are we doing? Yeah. And you're like, ah, I'm getting hit, but ah, listen, if that job is making you too uncomfortable, it's time to start looking for another. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm, you know what, you know what we know how to do real good? Fake pain. Mm. And keep on walking with that limp. Mm. I'm okay, yeah, I'm less high to fake. Ah, I got this little pain. No, it's time to jump. And I ain't talking about ignorance jumping. I've, I've seen some crazy jumps, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a jump when your feathers are developed and you're ready to fly, yeah. amen? Yeah. But we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown what? Inwardly, while we wait for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. This is the thing about it is, here. When you're mourning inwardly, and God calls you to do something else, 
don't get stuck on a stupid step. He told the Egyptian, I mean, he told the Israelites to leave Egypt. They left Egypt and they kept complaining about what they had back there. What's back there is back there. But what's back there is not for you in the forward realm. So you're trying to recreate what you have back here. Well, my old church used to do that. Yeah, well, guess what? If God is bringing you into a new thing, then it ain't going to be the old thing. It's going to be the new thing, and you cannot put old clothes with new clothes, or the clothes are going to what? Rip. Rip. So when God calls you righteous, peace, holy, well, I, I heard, you know, we don't supposed to pray like that. We're supposed to pray, God, my name Jimmy, give me more you can give me. No, this is a new thing. <laughs> Now you're supposed to be like, God, thank you for you have blessed me. You've already given me. You've already loved me. You already sent your son to die for me. He is not going on the cross again. It would be double jeopardy. <laughs> but what he is going to do, he can reintroduce himself to you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So don't get stuck, y'all, in one place. Always know that you can break into a new place in your life, amen. amen. Breaking out the fear of the unknown. Well, I just don't know. I don't know what's on the other side. Well, guess what, me neither. But we jumping anyway. <laughs> I remember, uh, you know, my parents have a wonderful business of real estate and rental houses and stuff like that. And, but I remember how I got started. <laughs> It was a leap of faith by one Miss Sharon Thompson. <laughs> and guess what? It didn't start with, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy this house for $4,000. It started with she just bought it with a credit card. <laughs> but it grew, and it grew, and it grew, and it grew. But I was there as a teenager witnessing this, saying, oh, my goodness. Oh, man, they painting it up. They doing it. Oh, but we need, we need some government says We need this and this. And I just seen it grow and grow and grow, but it was a step of faith. See, when you having a step of faith, sometimes you have to be a pioneer and go alone for a little bit. But guess what? Help is on the way. <laughs> but the help is only coming when you take the step. <laughs> we want the help before. <laughs> oh, man. multi 
asking is good. No, you have to go with one mind, one thought, one band, one song. One thing has to be planned if you want to be divine and walk with him. Because if he says you move, then you move. And then guess what happens? You'll be moving in his safety, in his own. In his spirit. There's certain things that God has told me to take a step in, and if I didn't take that step, then guess what? My disobedience could have cost me my life. So I don't play around when it comes to breaking out into the unknown. Because the unknown, uh oh, it's not just for you, it's the generations that are gonna come after you. <laughs> See, we always thinking about this about my job, my thing, my church, my. No, it's somebody else coming after you that you can't see. That's going to what? Take over. And they're only going to take over when they see you succeed. Amen? Amen. Even Paul. Paul, we, we got this illustration in our mind that Paul just stepped out on faith and nothing and anything, you know, or Timothy or whatever. You know, Timothy had his battles. Paul had his battles. And this is the thing that he says in 2 Timothy 1.12. It says, for this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know in whom I have believed. And I am what? Persuaded. What do persuasion mean? Persuasion mean that, that you got convinced, but you ain't started convinced. See, if you don't know, there's a jury in your mind right now. And it's a trial going on in your subconsciousness. And it's waiting for the deliberation of the witnesses. It's waiting for the deliberation of all of the testimonies. It's waiting and it's counting up. And if it don't have enough testimonies, it can't move forward. You will be guilty every time. But I got a testimony that he delivered me from depression. From anxiety, from fear, from heartbreak, from breakups, from so many different things that I got to move forward because the jury says so. Yeah. I'm moving forward. Not guilty. When do you can go? Yeah. But some of us are counting the wrong ballots. Some of us are counting the wrong jury. Some of us are focusing on the wrong things. And if you focus on all the evidence that commits you as guilty, you won't go. You remember what you did? Yeah, I seen what you did in, 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 yeah, in Baden. I seen what you did there. I seen what you did there. I seen what you did there. What happens is we count up the wrong things. And we go, okay, I'm sorry. I can't go anywhere. I got to get back in my chain. I got to get back in my house. Because you've been persuaded. Amen. Persuasion can go two different ways. Amen. But which way is it going to go for you? It's what, that's the reason why I keep placing this scripture about guarding your heart. Guarding the gates that comes in here. Because whatever you hear will permit you or disappoint you from going. I choose life. I, I, I bet you this. I bet you Des Bryant didn't just make that up. He got that from somewhere. Oh, brother, you did this? Yeah, man, I spend life with my kid. Man, I ain't never had that. Hear, did you hear what he said? I never had. You can speak life even though you've never seen it before. Ooh. How? You know people are millionaires. You may not have been a millionaire, millionaire before, but you know it exists. Stop thinking that you got to have it in your possessions just for it to be, exist. Just because it's not in your existence don't mean it can't be in your existence. You have to start somewhere, and sometimes you got to start boy. Sometimes you got to start on a credit card. Sometimes you got to start in the darkness. And then start speaking until it comes. I ain't never giving up on what God told me. I don't care what the doctor says. Yeah. I'm going to fight and fight till I ain't got no more. On, man. And when I ain't got no more, I'm going to keep fighting come in, too. Come on, come on. <laughs> It ain't never going to stop. It ain't never going to be over with, baby, because God ain't never quitting on you. On, we ain't singing these songs for play play that his, his love never fails and never gives up. And then we walk out here, oh, man, I got a flat tire. It's over. <laughs> what? We just got to sing all these beautiful harmonies. Oh, oh, that was, a, that was a segment. That wasn't your life. It was a cut. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to the real world. That's how some people live. Cut, we out of church now. We can, oh, yeah, let's start doing what I want. No, no, no. It's no cut. It's all action.
it's like that, it's like that Kenya chasing that gazelle. You, y'all, y'all going back home into your couches, I'm still chasing, why? Because it's fun for me. Yeah. See, it's fun for me to step on that devil's neck. Yeah. It's fun for me for, to see people that were alcoholic before and walk out that door and never look at alcohol again. It's fun for me to see people come out delivered. It's fun for me to see little children liberating and, and from having bad dreams and now, uh, because they got good things in their mind, they broke that generation curse of having bad dreams. It's fun yeah. to be liberated. You have to retrain yourself because you know what else could be fun? Mess. I choose the less. I choose rest. I choose life. But you know what? Uh-uh. I know. But get your butt out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> and receive what he's doing now. And have compassion of people who have been in change. Amen. Because you never know what a person had to do just to survive that moment, man. We've done some things that we didn't want to do. But guess what? When he delivers you, he'll show you, hey, there's a better way. There's a, I will make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. And when he makes that way for you, don't go back <laughs> into darkness. Don't go back into hiding. Don't go back to the Adam and Eve. <sighs> Live your life in peace and love. Army, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us all stand, amen.